Welcome back to another beer review with Nutmeg 2 Palmetto. Coming to you live or live to tape from the Untapped Beer Festival in Charlotte. I'm here with John, sales rep from Legal Remedy up in Rock Hill. Right. I get Rock Hill and Fort Mill confused. Hey, it's close enough, honestly. <laughs> yeah. man. It's a stone throw away. There's a river that divides us. So yeah. Close enough. <laughs> so, what, so, talk a little bit about, before we get into what you brought here, talk a little bit about the Legal Remedy brand. Obviously, it's a very legislative type of theme. All your beers have a very legislative type of uh, tongue-in-cheek reference. So, what, what's the Legal Remedy brand, and what's the story behind your brewery? So, the story is, most people don't know this. Most people believe it's lawyers that started it. Um, the way it actually started was four out of five of our owners are twins. They're all about the same age. And so, basically, the wives of the twins all want to support you, believe it or not. And so what they would do is basically they all became friends and started hanging out. Well, you know what that means? The husbands had to start hanging out. So the husbands started hanging out. Well, one of... Idle uh, conversation. What happens with yeah. sphere? So they were like, yeah, let's drink. And so what happens? You go, hey, I think we can brew beer. So that's what they started doing is just brewing beer for fun. And one of our owners is actually a lawyer. And so they were like, you know what? Like, this beer's pretty good. We should be in our beer contest. Here's the way the story works. If you ask the guys, our owners, they won the beer competition. And that's why they started a brewery. If you <laughs> ask the wives, what they did was is it was like a like drop-off ticket. And so basically you have like this box and you drop your ticket in. And what would happen is whoever had the most tickets at the end of like the like festival, that beer won the competition. So okay. what the wives did was supposedly oh. go up to everyone and be like, are you using your ticket? And so they put their tickets in the bucket and they won the beer competition. And this was like 2013, 2014. So they were like, you know what, let's open up a brewery. And so one of the concepts they came out with was Legal Remedy. So thus, Legal Remedy was born. <laughs> and that was around like 2013, 2013, yeah, okay. right around that area. Awesome. And that's how uh, it came to be. What? So one of my co-hosts on the Upstate Beer Boys podcast always like, not only does he ask about where the name came from, but also your building. What is your on-site like in Rock Hill? So, where, or like, because a lot of times, of course, we think craft breweries are spring up. They always spring up in industrial areas and yeah. former factories, warehouse, that sort of thing. So, what so we initially like? had a property out in like kind of like the Rock Hill, almost Fort Mill area, and then basically due to like some of the uh, laws during that time, they couldn't build on that premise. So they actually bought in downtown Rock Hill. It used to be a car dealership. So if you actually take a tour of the brewery and stuff, you'll see that they have like the massive like, lifts. Uh, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they took all the lifts and stuff out, but where they used to like drain the oil and all the drains and there's stuff. There's still holes and Yeah, there's still yeah. massive stuff down through there. Um, and so like if you ever go in there, you'll notice that the inside's really small, and that's because it wasn't meant to actually be a restaurant. It was a car dealership. A car dealership. Yeah. yeah. So it wouldn't be right. We're here at Untapped Beer Festival. It wouldn't be right to not talk about the beers you brought. Yes. So we had four beers that we brought. Um, so we have the watermelon uh, wheat, which is called a whistleblower. Um, we have the famous World Court Mocha. Of course. Uh, that's a blonde stout. And then we have Would our Would you consider that your flagship? I will say that that pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, probably our most distributed beer in South Carolina and North Carolina, which we do seem to be distributed in. Um, we have our double indemnity, double IPA, and then we also have uh, our hazy IPA, which is Justice Juice. And we so love I'm the slogan, right Justice now. never tasted so good. <laughs> so, uh, one thing one of my co-hosts on the podcast likes to talk about Steven Southern Blink Beer Reviews, you like to ask about what kind of uh, food amenities you offer at the public. Because of course you're drinking a lot, you want some sustenance. So what is what's legal revenue what's legal remedies sustenance offerings so people can stay and suck down a few more of your delicious beers? Ooh, I would definitely say you have to try our mandatory grilled cheese. Um, if mandatory. Go, mandatory grilled <laughs> cheese. That is a crowd favorite. Um, I also hear 
that the burger is one of the best things on the menu. I have officially tried the burger, to be completely honest with you. But the Shame. other thing. I know. Sales I know. rep. I know. You know, but I like being honest. That just means you have to come down. Yeah. But the other thing that you most definitely have to try is the poutine. Oh. You gotta try our bacon poutine. Don't tell a Northeasterner. The bacon and jelly. <laughs> I promise you, you won't be able to get enough of it. That's awesome. Um, so what, what's like your long term, what's like the long term goals for Legal Remedy? Are, are, is it just like, keep doing what you do? Because the world, you know, you have the world court mocha style, which is a banger and that goes everywhere. You have like plans for expansion. What, are there any future plans of Legal Remedy you could speak to? Yes. So as of right now, um, you know, we're in South Carolina, North Carolina. Um, we've really focused in South Carolina, so now we're starting to branch out to North Carolina. We're already in North Carolina, um, but we're really starting to push heavier into North Carolina, and that's the goal for right now. There's talk, we're trying to expand more, but for right now, um, the goal is South Carolina, North Carolina. Gotta keep them in the Carolinas. Yes, sir. Uh, there's, I, you know, there's a huge, of course, there's a huge presence in the Northeast with craft beer, so it's nice to see that Southern beer is also trying to make its footprint. Yes. Um, the other thing that we've done is uh, we've kind of done a rebrand with some of our labels. Um, we kind of got a lot of feedback working with like distro companies and stuff. And so what we ended up doing is basically changing some of our can labels. So you guys will probably see that here in the next few months at grocery stores. Awesome. And craft like bottle shops. Um, we've done a really, really good job with uh, the watermelon wheat that just came out, Justice Juice. And then we'll have a uh, Wild Deed and Long Dog, which is coming out as well, like a Vienna Lager and a West Coast style IPA. Um, and you'll see those new labels rolling out. And then we're going to actually change the uh, Double Indemnity and, of course, the world famous World Mocha. Now, one thing we like to focus on the Upstate Beer Boys podcast, and this is, of course, for my personal YouTube channel, but what, and uh, we'll talk later about getting a more longer form interview yeah, on the definitely. podcast. We'll have to get Zach out here with you. Um, but one thing we like to always focus on is drink local, support local. So what is Legal Remedy's footprint in the local community, whether that be specific to the Rock Hill area, the Greater Charlotte area, the South Carolina, Midlands, Upstate, maybe even Low Country, whatever the case may be. What is Legal Remedy's local footprint as far as charities, fundraisers, fundraisers breweries that you collaborate with? Uh, local artists, musicians, that sort of thing. Yeah, no, so we're actually doing this summer, uh, it's a, called a summer concert series. And we actually use, you know, being Charlotte so close and a great music hub, we use a bunch of actual local bands. So Captain Lunchbox, um, they play plenty of other breweries. Um, I know they have a show recently here at, I think, Highwire, whenever they open up. Mm -hmm. um, they play all over, so like, we try to use as many local bands as we can. But uh, the other companies, um, and charities like we support is obviously Pink Boots. Everyone knows what Pink Boots yep. is. We love supporting women um, in the brewing community. Um, our, one of our main owners, her name's Cassie. Um, she's actually a certified Cicerone. And she is a member of the Pink Boots Society. And so she loves coming up here and doing events. Um, we also work with the other local, like York County breweries, and we're part of the Bartenders Guild. Um, so we'll normally do collabs with Free Play, which is a small microbrewery out of Fort Mill. Yeah. We do a lot of collabs with the More RTs and uh, basically Dust Off and those other companies. Um, so we're trying to keep it as close as possible. But Actually, I just grabbed the Pink Boots beer from Fireforge down in Greenville last night. Really? Yeah. How was it? I haven't tried it yet. I'm kind of decide, trying to save it for its own for special YouTube pop. So yeah, we it was unfortunately a, it was not available on tap. So it was all cans only. Yeah, we did a, a hazy reboot, which was uh, basically like a, it's like a double dry hop uh, pale ale. Um, and we did it with replay. We did it with slow play. Oh my gosh, it was the other one. Lower. They were all there. Lower, okay. Yeah. It turned out really good, which we had more of. So. <laughs> yes. So that what um, so what, as far as breweries you've collaborated with or plan to collaborate, is there anything you could tip your cap to? As far as things you were proud of, things that are upcoming that you're excited for. Um. So we're actually doing uh, a big event. Uh, I'm trying to think of the exact rescue place. 
I'm actually working with Animal Rescue Place. Okay. A uh, release with uh, Mama, which has a picture of Zach, our head brewer's dog. I'm really excited about that, and that should be kind of being pushed out here soon. So I'm not going to get in trouble for saying that. Law dog being a canine unit, or so uh, what it's gonna like basically do is it's gonna go. Some of the proceeds will go to uh, Animal Rescue Society, and then another um, basically will go to a competition. Uh, okay. And we're gonna like, bring the little animal rescues out. Excellent. Hopefully people can you know, take them home if they want. So we'll see how well that works out. So we're really excited about it, and basically it'll be a competition. You submit pictures of your own animals, and we'll choose it. Well, John, thank you for hopping out with me. This wasn't enough of me. Go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. So you know exactly when my videos drop. Like videos with interviews with John here from Legal Remedy. If this isn't enough of me for you, go ahead and follow my social media channels at Nutmeg to Palmetto on TikTok and Instagram. If social media is not your thing, we all know it can be a little overwhelming at times. Go ahead and download and subscribe to the Up Upstate Beer Boys podcast available on all your listening platforms and John you're the guest I'd like to give you the final word anything you want to jump in yeah go follow us at Legal Remedy Brewing um, Instagram Facebook um, any type of social media social media and obviously always remember justice never tastes so good justice never tastes so good cheers John thank you for joining us appreciate you cheers everyone